Now we've got 20 people. Is Sandra here? I bet Sandra Brown is with us. Sandra, Sandra does everything. Her buttercup. Like she's crazy about buttercup. Here, baby girl. She's like, okay. Oh, she's smart. because she just really enjoys them. And so she ordered eggs, but the first batch came late, and I guess maybe they had thought, the farmers thought they got lost and sent us a courtesy package too. So we wound up with twice as many eggs, and we thought the second round wouldn't hatch. But it did, and Buttercup was part of the second round. And all, I mean, we had ducklings everywhere, peeping all over the place, and it was really, really cool. But I came into class one day, and Buttercup had been born over the weekend, I think it was. He was born on the 9th, which may have been a Sunday, I think it was. I'd have to check. But, um, and I came into class Monday, and all the other Biology 2 classes were talking about there was a duck with a gimp leg. And I just really don't like that term anyways, but I went in there and I saw him with all the other ducklings and his left leg was turned completely behind him and underneath him. So he really could only use one leg. So I immediately decided I would take him to my vet and that's Dr. Ralph Pope in Carrieville. And uh, I volunteer a lot for him, so I thought it'd be good. And I took Buttercup to him and threw a bunch of casts made out of really soft tape. Then um, it, we got his knee going the right way. And just they grow so fast and everything that his leg or his foot never turned the right way. It just turned inside. So, but it was... It was better than he started out because at least he could walk then, and that's that was my goal at least. So 
he used to, he lived in my room with me and pretty much ran free. Like when he was really little, we kept him in a pet carrier at night until not very long though, because he actually slept in the bed with me a lot in a smaller pet carrier every night until he got bigger. And then I got him a playpen and I'd set it up by my windows and I got him a bed and a teddy bear. He had the teddy bear from day one since I got him. And then when he was two weeks old, I guess, we got him the bed. Because he was a little bit bigger by then, so probably like two weeks old. And um, he used to sit in his bed with his teddy all the time and just worked out really good for him. He's, I guess when he was a month old, was it, that he was so sick? Mm -hmm. He got really sick. He got a really bad bacterial infection. We were really afraid he wasn't going to make it. But um, he went back and stayed with Dr. Pope for two or three days <laughs> and overnight and everything. And Dr. Pope got him back up and everything. It was going a lot better, but that's kind of when we found that he was splay legged and he does splits a lot of the time. So that's not long after that, he decided to do um, a strike. Do you remember the thing between their legs, what that's called? Hobbling. Hobbling? Okay. Well, we hobbled him for a while, and then we just decided that wasn't really fair to him because it was helping him walk, but it must be terrible to have something between your legs all the time. So my mom thought about getting the kind of, what would you say that is, like rubbery bandage wrap kind of thing? Like the vet wrap? Stuff? Yeah, like the vet wrap stuff. Right here. And this is Teddy. And um, we got the vet wrap and wrapped it around his bad foot and that way he was able to grip so he could walk around on the carpet and stuff he could grip and he was walking so much better and it was just really fun we used to do a bunch of stuff all the time we used to watch movies and by the time he was like two or three months old i could tell him you know go to your bed it's bedtime and he would he'd walk over to his bed and get in his bed and he'd stay there all night until the next morning he'd wake me up like if it was on the weekend and he'd wake me up like eight probably seven or eight but since he was little i would tell him that it was bedtime and i'd tell him shh and so he'd be quiet and he'd go to bed so he just kind of learned and then by the time he was two or three months old, he was just so big for the condo my mom and I live in that we had to do something with him because we wanted him to live kind of a normal duck life best he could. So I started looking for places and I just really wasn't happy with anything. And then I came across Feathered Angels Waterfowl Sanctuary where they have a barn, it's heated and cooled, it's fenced and all of this wonderful stuff. So I decided to contact them, and I was just lucky enough that they contacted me back and said they'd take him. So, and now I come and visit him as much as I can. Tell me what he was like, like a day or two old, like when he was teeny tiny. Like he uh, would fit your hands. He, I would wrap him up in um, a washcloth and hold him on my chest, you know, or yeah. put him like right inside my shirt just to where he could go to sleep, and he would. That's how I got chores done, because I couldn't leave him by himself. <laughs> so, because he'd get really upset, so I'd wrap him up in a washcloth and see him just barely in my shirt, and he'd just sleep like that, and that's how I got all my chores done. And that's what we did, that's how I did homework. You carry him around like that with you? Oh my gosh. <laughs> and he was comfortable with that? Oh yeah. He, he loved it. Yeah, and he'd just be asleep. Yeah. My mom got home on the first night that I had him, and I was doing that, and she's like, is he asleep? I was like, yeah. <laughs> wow, that's pretty cool. So, it was really fun him sleeping in bed with me, though. That was cool. Yeah. <laughs> and I wouldn't let him swim until he was probably like a month and a half or so, because I was afraid, because I heard all these horror stories about them drowning when they're that little because right. they don't have the necessary feathers and everything so I was scared to death to let him swim. Right. So but when he was about a month old, Dr. Pope told me I could have let him swim before that, but right. so I just wasn't sure. But about that time I got him to start swimming. Yeah. And, and he was so funny because he used to run around my room all the time. And just walk around and pick at different things. I had a pair of shoes I'd leave tied in the corner all the time. And he'd go and pick all my shoestrings. Played with the shoestring. Yeah, yeah and he just played with a bunch of different he things. He still loves shoestrings, for sure. <laughs> and of course, he used to bully my cats. Yeah. That was really funny. He's getting weird lately. He's bullying the, 
other ducks down there, which I guess is kind of a good thing with his disability, you know? Yeah. Hey, Kimmy, were you in the class? No, I was not. No? I was, but not, I mean, I'm a year older than her, so, yeah. obviously, like, it was a different time. Right. I wanted to get a duck, but I really couldn't, because my parents might not. Right. Yeah, I just went after school and helped her out with Buttercup all the time, yeah. and during school, and we had a chance, and I had a study hall or something. I went into the class and helped her out with Buttercup. Yeah. Oh, she was always at my house, so. <laughs> and then, I didn't really spend the night out a whole lot. I only spend the night really with Kimmy anyway. She brought him with But me. any time that I wasn't at home for the night, I took him with me. Right. Like when I'd spend the night at her house, it was fun. Did, um, <laughs> did you take him to school? Back yeah. to school or something? I took him to school every day. Oh, really? So he could... He like he didn't really like the other ducklings because they were mean to him. Yeah. But as the process went on, they were nicer to him, I guess, because his leg was being corrected. So and I wanted him to be able to socialize during the day. I didn't want him to just be stuck at home by himself. Right. So I did. I took him to school every day, and he got to sit with the other ducklings, and I made sure they didn't bother him, kind of thing. Like I'd check in throughout the day, and of course I had a class in there. So. Right. And then when it was during my class time. I got to get him out, and he used to sit in my jacket during the whole class. Wow. So. Did um, did the other kids do that too, or did the rest of the ducks just stay at school all the time? Um, unless you decided to take one home, the uh, they just took them home. Like they wouldn't bring them back to that's school. That's what I was wondering. Right. Wow, that's so great. And of course, you know, a lot of the kids, it was. Oh, they're so cute, and then they'd poop on the desk, and it'd be like, ew, and put them back down. Right. You know. Now, what did he stay in at school? Did you have a little pen, or was it like a aquarium kind of a thing? Or um, what was it? she had them in the, you know what I'm talking about, like the big Tupperware boxes, uh -huh. kind of, yeah. kind of like that, okay. and then she had heat lamps on them. I gotcha. Oh, my gosh. And so for everybody watching, Ruby was res actually rescued. Uh, we don't know who originally took Ruby home, but Ruby was um, found over off of... Um, uh, it doesn't mean anything to people on the internet, but the other side of town at an um, apartment complex, and a lady called us right around Christmas and said... Y'all got to help this duck. Of course, we get calls from people all the time. You got to help ducks. But the lady said, this is a baby duck, little bitty yellow, you know, fuzzy duck. It was cold. And it was going to be like 20-something that night. And so, um, so we said, well, we got to go save that one. So um, the lady met us out there at the complex, and there was a bin. I showed y'all the picture, hadn't you? There was like a plastic bin that that he had been living in and actually had a little teddy bear also and um, maybe a little food bowl and um, he had climbed out and the lady said he had been swimming around on the swim pool cover because it had some rainwater on it one time she had seen him but then when we, the time we got out there he was actually swimming around the lake and he was chasing mallards and peeping trying to catch up with them basically wanting to be part of the group you know and so we went all the way around that lake and tried to get him to come out, to catch him, and he wouldn't come out. And so the lady that had been going out there for a couple of days said that she um, usually got him to come out on the other end. So she went down to the other end and called him, and he actually came out, and, um, and she grabbed him. And he was a little bitty. I mean, he was, I mean, at that point, he was probably five or six weeks old, I guess, but still, compared to now, you know, he was real small. And, and so then, when you brought Buttercup out here, I immediately noticed that their shape of their bill, I noticed they were the same age, because I don't know if you remember, remember when you, first, when you brought Buttercup, he still had a little bit of the yeah. baby fuzz, like on his neck, mm -hmm. and Rudy had the same kind of fuzz at the same place, you know, so you could tell that they were the same age. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that's right. And um, and also, I noticed the the bridge of their bill around their nostrils is very, you know, kind of distinct. Both of theirs look have the same kind of texture and the same kind of pattern. It's different than 
Minnie and Willie and Blondie and, and the others. And, um, no. So that's how Ruby came along. But uh, oh, we've got a quick question. There's Sandra. Hi, Sandra. Hi. Does Buttercup get a present? Well, he's actually just getting his Missouri food. Uh, we thought about getting him a uh, another bear or something at the pet store a couple weeks ago, but we decided he really liked Teddy the best, so we didn't want him to have to be confused with with another one. Um, so I guess Buttercup's present is you guys being here. Really, that's probably the best thing, and y'all's attention to him on the internet and. And um, keeping up with what he's up to and supporting us, that really means really means a lot you know, to all of us. Where do you live, Sandra? She'll tell me in a minute. Um, let's see, what else was I going to ask you about him when he was little? Because see, I had Minnie when she was little. Minnie was a part of a hatching project. We got her from a girl... <laughs> Her name was uh, Madison, I believe, and she lived over off of Houston Levy. And she called us and had Minnie and um, brought her out here. Um, of course, Minnie now is three years old, so it was a couple years before. So I'm sure, probably considering where she lived, right over there at Wolf River and mm -hmm. Houston Levy, I mean, I'm sure it's part of the same project. So when I got Minnie, she was, she was maybe four or five weeks old. She was maybe a little younger than Rudy, but yet she was still a little yellow and fuzzy. Mm -hmm. And I know she would um, she would sit on my shoulder, like at my desk. She would sit up on my shoulder, sleep while I worked on the computer, which was pretty fun. Yeah. Um, they're so cute when they're little like that, you know, mm -hmm. so fuzzy. Oh, it, was, it was just so funny because you know any cup of water I had. That I was drinking. Yeah. If he wanted it, I'd let him drink out of it. And some of my friends would be like, "Are you really serious? You're letting him drink out of that?" And I was yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um. Did you see that duck that I, that's on the table? That white duck. Mm -hmm. I found. Had I showed you that? No. I found that at um, the Goodwill store. Oh really? And it looks exactly like him standing up and doing his backward bow. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. <laughs> Looks exactly like that, except the eyelashes are kind of girly. <laughs> that was just kind of the way it came. Um, you can see he's about finished losing all his feathers, and and uh, seems to be feeling a little better the past the past week or so. Not here as much. That's good. Rudy, you're really good. What are you saying about it? Rudy's not minding his bib at all. Mm -mm. He's just standing there enjoying it. I like his bib. No. <laughs> yeah, you know, and there was, you know, because by the time that his group was hatched, it was a week or two after the first hatch. Oh, after the first group, and all of those had gone home, except maybe a, a couple of them. And there was one they brought back that was significantly bigger hmm. than Buttercup's group. Yeah. And they passed him around between a couple of the girls, I guess, and they eventually just brought him back. Yeah. And I don't really know what ever happened to him, but Maybe Rudy. I say unless it's Rudy. <laughs> you never know. Because, I mean, he was really big. He was bigger than the ones in his group. Yeah. So. Yeah. He's the biggest one I've ever seen, for sure. Anybody with us on the internet, uh, if each one of you will tell me kind of what state or where you're from, that would be pretty interesting. That's right. And he's like, I want to know. So you would have never dreamed that Buttercup, a year later, of course, it's been a fast year. It doesn't seem like long since he's, he's been here. Yeah. But um, you never dreamed that um, he'd have gone through all of the all of the uh, events and news and everything like he has this year. No. Oh, I just had to switch over. There were some other questions. Um, of course, it doesn't give me your name. Let's see. One person said, "This is super sweet. Thank you for letting us join in." 
Another one says, Happy Hatch Day, Buttercup from Scooter, the 15-year-old cockatiel. <laughs> well, thank you, Scooter. And um, ask, how old is Minnie? Minnie is uh, right at three years old now. Um, and that was 30 minutes ago. I apologize for just now switching over and seeing that. Um, one person said they're in Ohio. That's pretty cool. Feathered Angels page about the 3D printer thing. Mm 
Mm -hmm. I did. You saw that, Kimmy? So I'm going to have a campaign to try to raise funds to get a 3D printer here uh, so okay. that I can do a lot quicker design and newer designs. And there's um, a goose in Connecticut that needs two legs. It needs whole legs, not just feet. Wow. Yeah. And um, the vet um, had to do surgery, I don't know how long ago, a few weeks ago or something. So it's recovering from the sur surgery, but apparently it's it's like up at the hock is where, the, is where it, they had to amputate the legs. Wow. And um, so he's wanting me to help design not just the foot, but the leg portion. So, which is going to take a lot more work, and I'm actually going to have structure in the leg portion yeah. to connect to the foot, and then like the whole sock that would go over the the remaining part of, of the peg that it's got. Yeah. So we don't know if it's going to work, and I don't know if it would even be able to stand up on it. But um, that one, and then there's a um, a guy that contacted me from Pennsylvania this week. And this lady rescued uh, a duck that kind of looks like um, Festus. It's a roan. roan. Oh, yeah. And it was caught up in fishing line, had a hook in his mouth, oh. and the line was wrapped all around its leg. And the time they caught it, the leg was barely hanging on. Oh. Um, so they took it to the vet. The vet removed the hook and um, removed the fishing line, but he had to go ahead and cut the rest of the, the foot off. So I thought it was going to be really short, but they sent me a picture, and it looks like buttercups. It okay. looks like it's got pretty much the full peg down close to the foot. And so it looks like, I mean, almost maybe exactly the same foot would help that duck. Okay. Which is pretty exciting. So yeah. they're getting me some more measurements of how big the peg is and whether or not it's really healed up. And so... Um, that's pretty neat, but if I need to size that, you know, I could, and so between the, the geese needing help and that other duck, and I still need to work on, you know, I'm wanting to work on a better foot for Buttercup, then um, we just decided to see if we could have a fundraising campaign and see if we could raise the money to, to do it. We've already got like three people donate yesterday to us. That's cool. And um, so I'm going to put like a thermometer graph thing on this page with, you know, how much we need. But I had contacted Novacopy to see what she could do for me to, to get one and see how much money I really need to come up with. I'm figuring it's probably going to be about $2,500 to $1,000 or so. so um, but that would be pretty exciting because then I can, you know, then I can actually fabricate. Like for the goose, I can actually make the leg part on the 3D printer and that will actually be the leg part. That'd be cool. and, and so then I can have the part that, that connects over it on the sock might even be able to make that on the 3D printer and then um, the neat thing would be maybe at the bottom that I could change the molding on my foot to actually make the angle part where it Flexes. bolted on yeah. to the leg part and so then I would still mold the... Somebody just pulled that. Who did? Somebody did. Oh. So then I could make the, the foot itself would still be urethane rubber like it is, but the rest of the materials I could make on the 3D printer. And then they would bolt together. Yeah. See what I'm saying? And then it would be adjustable. And that cool. so that's pretty exciting. Yeah. So, uh, I'm interested in that. <laughs> you recognize it? Is it Jim's mom? Uh, I can't tell anyone in the car yet. Or well, maybe it's Carol and Brooks in there. It's Is like it a little, red? It's a Dodge? silver car. The silver Honda, I think. The little Toyota or something? Mm -hmm. Can you see that though? I don't know who that is. Oh, I can't see you, so. Uh, yeah, I don't know you. Oh, it's on. Um, she's only an hour and ten minutes. works at Ducks Unlimited and she really helped us like with our fundraiser last year and stuff. Um, and uh, she's really, really sweet. If you want to put him down or something and y'all want cake, got cake and ice cream. And cup, cup, you want to walk around? So, yep, yeah, yep. Let's walk around. Hang on.
buttercups, brother. Buttercups on your baby. I'm sweet about how so quick holding up. We're live on the internet, um, and we have um, visitors from Denmark. Is that ever amazing? And Ohio. I actually pronounced the name correctly. Bros killed. Huh. Say perfect. Um, Iowa, Ohio. Minnie was in early earlier when we sang to him, but Minnie was a little fussy, so she wanted to go back outside. So. Yeah, we're live on the internet. We got a few people with us. Okay. Uh, people asking yeah, questions. Awesome. And oh, yeah. It's kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's definitely. Uh, yeah, dude. Look, Buttercup. I own brought you a present. <laughs> Look, Buttercup. <laughs> Can't see him on here. Let me move this out of the way. Come here, look. <laughs> Can you play with that? I figured if nothing else, you'd mess with it. Yeah. It's fabulous. It's like sweating. I guess. Probably because you're going to shake your jacket off. Rudy? I knew you'd just been too good, boy. You've been really good. Yeah. I, don't know. I couldn't believe when I pulled a rock in the garage and there wasn't a pen in there. No. I don't think I've ever not seen no. a pen in there. Well, they've all been out since the weather got, got cool. Isn't he good? Look how good he is. Baby boy. Oh, I know. You're so good. You are so good. You probably want some water. We're going to see if you want some melon here in a second. You want that big tea messy in here? I don't care. Who cares? Come here. You want some water? Get you some water, baby boy. Oh, they've made a mess. We got Missouri water fried food everywhere. Buttercup. Cup, cup. Cup, cup's molted, so he's lost his feathers, so he's kind of skinny looking right now, but he um, hadn't gotten his new feathers in yet. He's just been molting. Buttercup. All right, let's see if I can cut this one. Let's see. So how have you been feeling? Feeling pretty good? Absolutely great. Oh, yeah. I'm so excited. Yeah, it's a big difference from one year ago. Golly. Mm -hmm. Well now are you drinking the wine or do you want cake or ice cream? Oh. Chase, y'all come get whatever you want. Look, I got ice cream. Ew, don't watch out, guys. You, okay. you, you got pictures of the cake that you can I do. Like, no, I'm not going to tell you. I can walk on this floor. Give me a 
I own is a 15 year old cockatiel named Scooter.
Well, hey, Cousin Karen. It's been kind of slow. A bunch of people end up having stuff that they couldn't come, but it's fun. Chase and her friends are here, and Ion's here. Jen's sick today, so she wasn't able to come in. But it's still okay. Buttercup, you're missing the E off your pen. What are you and Ruby doing? You're eating your melon, aren't you? Your cousin Karen says, Happy Hatch Day. Happy Hatch Day.
It's so hilarious to have a buttercup doing that, like, with his foot. Mm -hmm. And then, like, repeat that, like, in Adobe and get him dancing to a song. <laughs> That'd be great.
really don't have to worry, I don't think, with, you know, one of the others fighting him and, and hurting him, you know. Yeah. And like I say, he's kind of, they'll kind of come around. He, he, the other night he was wrestling with, well, he wrestled with Rudy's own, kind of held his own, and then he wrestled with little Danny. Oh, really? And they were fighting and wrestling, Buttercup. You know, won that one with that foot. He can push. You know, so uh -huh. when they're leaning and pushing against each other, he can he can battle them. That's and really. Hardy came over and he kind of pushed him away. So I mean, he's kind of set his place as he's not going to be picked on. You know, so yeah. I'm more comfortable with him just being out and being able to run around and do whatever he wants to do. But for the most part, he stays right down there by by me. Rudy. 